So Saffron Island in Newport in 1996 uh, did this very now well-known study looking at eight-month-old's ability to statistically learn transitional probability information, in this case between syllables. And so we're just going to walk through how that study worked. So they used a familiarization preference procedure. And basically, the way that they measure an infant response is by looking at their sustained visual fixation on a blinking light. And the idea is if infants have extracted information, in this case based on transitional probabilities, during the habituation trials, where they get exposed to certain types of stimuli and have to extract or process it unconsciously in some way, then when you give them different test stimuli, they're going to have different looking times depending on how surprising they find each stimulus, right? So this is again one of these indirect measurements based on how surprised babies are. From that we try to infer what it was that surprised them or why it surprised them based on what we habituated them to. Okay, so during habituation, infants were exposed to auditory material that serves as a potential learning experience. And at test, they would have either familiar items, uh, which would contain already within that auditory material, and so this should be boring in theory, or they would have novel items not contained within the auditory material, but which are nonetheless, you know, really similar to that material. But if they noticed that difference, then the novel one should be surprising. Infants should look longer. So here was the artificial language uh, types of things that they used. They were four made-up words with three syllables each, and they varied conditions so that, you know, there wouldn't be anything like, oh, you had special syllables for this language, but not that one. So they tried it with two different languages, but we're going to focus on condition A, which is those four at the top, uh, Tupiru, Golabu, Bidaku, Padoti. These are, again, completely made-up words. They happen to have three syllables each. And so infants were familiarized with the sequence of these words generated by a speech synthesizer for two minutes. And the speaker's voice was female, and the intonation was monotone, so it's like this really boring sounding thing. And the important thing is that there were no acoustic indicators of word boundaries, right? The only way that you could tell that these were even separate units whatsoever is because of the transitional probability information. If you were able to track it, or you just, you know, in general sequence information, right? So I think I should have a sample here of what that sounded like. Again, these babies are hearing this for two minutes. So I'm not sure if you could hear that, but the idea was that it didn't sound a lot like language. It definitely was not obvious to tell where the word boundaries were. So uh, the main thing from a transitional probability standpoint was that within words, the transitional probability was one. But across word boundaries, the transitional probability of syllables was one third, right? Because there are three different words that can follow, right? And so within, you're going to have a transitional probability of one. So two in 2p row, 2p, that's always a sequence you're going to see. p follows 2. 2p two, is your sequence, right? Same thing with p row. It's going to have that probability of one for that sequence. So two P row, the whole word has a sequence of one. Same thing for all of our words, right? So within words, the transitional probability is one. But across words, the transitional probability is one third. So two P row can be followed by one of the other three words. So the next syllable that happens, one third chance of which one it is, right? So there's a lower probability across word boundaries in this made up language. So if you're paying attention to this, and this is again really the only information out there, then you know this should hopefully clue you in on where these word boundaries are if you're an eight month old. So a learner sensitive to transitional probabilities would put boundaries say in those positions right there. Okay, so they got habituated to that. And here was the test trial from experiment one, right? So two were real words that they actually heard, tupiro kolabu, right? These are actual words. And two were fake words whose syllables were, were just like the real ones, but they were jumbled up, right? So ropitu or bulago, right? And what happened was infants listened longer to the novel items, those jumbled up words, right? You know, this was a statistically significant difference, 8.85 seconds versus 7.97. So what we take away from this is that infants notice the difference between real words and non-words from the artificial language after only two minutes of listening time. Wow, eight-month-olds, that's kind of awesome. Now question, why, right? Well, it could be that they just noticed a familiar sequence of sounds 
versus an unfamiliar one. So 2P row is familiar while, while row P2 never appeared, right? It, that was a sequence you never heard. So that's actually something that you could, if you're really clever, pay attention to without necessarily paying attention to transitional probability information. So this is why they did a second experiment. So they had the same kind of habituation, but now the test is two real world, two, excuse me, two real words like 2P row and Golabu, and two part words. So ones that span uh, word boundaries. So 2P row is followed by Golabu, so the part word is puro go, right, which is spanning that word boundary, right? So if you really were segmenting these things based on transitional probability, that should be like super surprising, right? And importantly, you've heard, right? And this is just showing you, right? These words that are spanning the word boundaries. You've heard all of these sequences, both the real words and the part words. So it's not just about sequences. It's really about, did you notice the transitional probability difference? If you did, you should listen longer to novel items, these part words, which is exactly what infants did. They were surprised by part words. So we, from this, take the fact that infants are noticing this difference, meaning that they are sensitive to transitional probability information, even after only two minutes of listening time, right? So that is pretty cool.